So we're here at Experimental Biology, and I have the great pleasure of speaking with Dr. Stephen O'Keefe of Pittsburgh. Today you talked about colon cancer risk. So can you tell us how, um, how you started to study diverse populations with colon cancer risk? Um, I, I had the um, privilege of working as a gastroenterologist in South Africa um, in the 80s and 90s. And um, so I've always been interested in differences in disease patterns between different uh, populations and different countries. If you look at the differences in incidence rate of colon cancer in Africans, it's less than five per 100,000, uh, and it's, it's a rare cause of death. Uh, in African Americans, um, it's over 65 per 100,000, and you know it's one of the leading causes of death. So uh, immediately we can see uh, big differences um, which may be related to environmental factors. Mm -hmm. And so you talked today about your dietary switch studies, which I found really fascinating. And what did you find out from that? And so if you look at communities um, with a low risk of colon cancer, they eat very little meat and fat, whereas they eat high fiber. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we investigated this because, you know, bearing in mind that, you know, your diet is modified by uh, your digestive tract. So whereas it's easy to see that certain dietary components can affect the upper GI tract uh, directly um, on contact, um, about 95% of what we eat is absorbed before it gets to the colon. But importantly, there's a residue left behind. And this residue then goes down and is fermented by bacteria or the microbiome um, to produce metabolites which um, experimentally have been shown to have a dramatic effect on mucosal health. Such that if you have a high fiber diet, um, <coughs> you produce, um, you, you change the microbiota to butyrate producers. And uh, so you get high rates of butyrate production from sacrolytic fermentation. And you know, it, it's, it's quite remarkable how many studies, both experimental and human, that have shown that butyrate is the uh, dominant factor in maintaining mucosal health. First of all, it provides the chief energy source for the colonocytes, not glucose like the rest of the body. But if we change our diet so it contains very little fiber and we eat you know, high meat and high fat, it induces um, other types of changes in the microbiota which produce other kinds of metabolites which are inflammatory and potentially carcinogenic. And so we think that risk is associated with <coughs> the balance between the two. Mm -hmm. And that um, um, a normal balanced diet will make sure that the good guys outweigh the bad guys and uh, sacroly sacrolytic fermentation will predominate. Mm -hmm. So, and what did you actually feed the Africans that came into your center in Africa when you switched them to the Western diet? So, so we, f we fed them terrible Westernized food. <laughs> so it was a high meat diet, and uh, so it included barbecued meat, um, mm -hmm. hamburgers, French fries, um, all those delicious things that we like to eat, but <coughs> probably not very good for your health. Mm -hmm. Did they enjoy it? Did they? Say they loved it. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, that, that's the that's the worrying thing. And um, you know, some might say, well, you know, it's unethical giving them these terrible diets. But you know, two weeks is really not going to change very much. And <coughs> it must be realized that fast food is rapidly entering Africa, and the only reason they don't eat it is because of financial reasons that they can't afford to. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, and um, you know, so so you know, we don't wor we don't have to worry that you know we would start something new. Right. Yeah. <coughs> well, thank you for your time today. Pleasure. Thank you.